Educator. Hello student, I'm Mary Kamau, teaching biology form 3, lesson 1. The topic of discussion is classification 2, subtopic Kingdom Monera. So in this topic, the introduction was done in form 1, where classification 1 was done. Just a quick recap of what was discussed in form 1 is a definition of the term classification which was da, which was a grouping of living organisms based on their structures so when we are grouping these living organisms we use their external structures and we put them in one group known as a taxon so in form 1 there were seven taxonomic units of classification which were discussed. So this classification enables us to arrange information about living organisms in an ordinary manner in order to avoid chaos and confusion. Student, if I give you an, a living organism such as a rabbit, you name it by your mother language, scientifically we may not communicate because that organism has different names so classification enables us to communicate where these living organisms are given scientific names all living organisms are scientifically identified by two names that is the genus name and the specific name so that classification is known as binomial nomenclature. By means to, by means to, that is why we have the two names, the genus and the specific name. And therefore, the definition of the term binomial nomenclature is the scientific double naming of living organisms using the genus and the specific name. So the two names give us the species of an organism. So we have different uh, features that are used to classify these living organisms. Some of the features used to classify animals includes, number one, the body symmetry, so some of the living organisms have bilateral symmetry. That means they can be divided into two equal parts. While others have radial symmetry, meaning they cannot be divided into two equal parts. They can be divided into several parts for the same uh, feature. Presence or absence of the body cavity, some such as organisms belonging to phyram arthropoda have a serum in their body cavity. Presence of the alimentary canal, some of them have oral canals or oral cavity, others have anal openings. Presence and the type of excretory organs, so different living organisms have different excretory organs, such as as we use the kidney as our excretory organ. Type and number of external appendages. So some organisms have six number of appendages, others have two, others have eight appendages. Appendages are lips, the legs. Others have different types of skeletons which can be used to classify these organisms 
For example, we have ourselves who have endoskeletons. Organisms such as locusts have exoskeletons, which can be used to classify them. Their body shapes, some of them are segmented. So we have some which have more than one segment. Others have three segments and others have very many segments on their bodies. For example, a grasshopper has three segments. That is the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Uh, an organism like a spider has two uh, body parts. And others like earthworms has uh, several segments on their bodies. The other feature that can be used to classify living organisms is the structures of the gaseous exchange. So some of them use gills like fish, others use lungs like man, others use skins like frogs, others use uh, the lining of the buccal cavity again like frogs. Another feature is the body coverings. So we have different uh, body coverings, such as the scales for fish. We have hair, and others like birds have their bodies covered with feathers. Mode of reproduction can also be used to classify these living organisms. So some of them, or some living organisms, have a complete metamorphosis, that is a three cycle. Others have incomplete metamorphosis, uh, which they undergo to complete their life cycle, which can also be used to classify these living organisms. So those are some of the features that are used to classify animals in different taxons. Remember I said a taxon is just a group of uh, living organisms which have similar structures. So for plants, plants are also living organisms which can be classified using external features such as, number one, presence or absence of vascular system. So some plants have vascular bundles, that is the xylem and the phloem, others lack the vascular bundles, like you're going to see as we continue with our discussion. The other one is the type of reproductive structures. Some uh, plants have capsules, others have sporangium, which are used, uh, which produce uh, the structures that are used in uh, reproduction. The other one is the flora, uh, flower form, the number and the position of the floral parts, uh, we have the type of fruits and finally we have the structure of the seed and the pattern of placentation. So basically those are some of the structures that are used to classify living organisms in their different taxons. Remember I said in form one there were three, seven taxonomic units of classification which were discussed and all those living organisms were classified uh, using those external features. So today, in Form 3, we're going to look at classification 2, that is Kingdom Monera. So Kingdom Monera comprises of the simplest forms of living organisms. It uh, comprises of living organisms that are uh, simple in that they are unicellular living organisms. So some of the living organisms uh, that belongs to Kingdom Monera includes one, bacteria, and number two, the blue green algae. So there is a diagram of the bacterium there. It's a unique living organism in that it has some features uh, that are found in other living organisms, but somehow different from the features that are found in other living organisms. For example, uh, we have uh, different uh, characteristics of these organisms. 
which enables us to classify it as uh, Monera or in Kingdom Monera and not a Kingdom Plantae or Kingdom Animaria. So one of the characteristics is that uh, these organisms are microscopic, meaning we cannot see them with our naked eyes. They can only be seen by the use of an instrument known as a microscope. Student, I know you are conversant with a light microscope which has a low resolution and therefore when we are studying this organism we can only see uh, more features by the use of an electron microscope. So these organisms are microscopic in that they cannot be seen with our naked eyes. Number two, they are unicellular. Unicellular means that they are single-celled. And single-celled organisms are simple organisms which lack most of the elaborate structures that are found in a multicellular organism. So uh, Kingdom Monera comprises of organisms uh, which are unicellular. Number two, number three, their nuclear material is not surrounded by a membrane. That is, they do not have a true nucleus and therefore they are said to be prokaryotic. Number four, they lack cell organelles such as mitochondrion and the chloroplasts. So chloroplasts are organelles that are commonly found in organisms that are able to carry out photosynthesis. And the reason as to why I've said that these organisms are, uh, are unique is because the second example there is blue-green algae. I will explain why blue green algae is a unique uh, living organism that belongs to this kingdom Monera, though we are saying that these organisms uh, lack chloroplast organelles. Number five, they have a rigid cell wall. If you look at that diagram, you will see a cell wall labeled somewhere. This cell wall is different from the cell wall that is found in plant cells in that the cell wall that is found in plant cells is made up of cellulose material but uh, the cell wall that is found in a bacterium uh, is made up of a microprotein or the mucoprotein and uh, this uh, cell wall gives the bacterium a definite shape just it as it does uh, in plants.